here um, with Nada from the Corey Foundation, as well as Lisa Richmond. Um, this is our last workshop with them for this challenge, we'll say that. <laughs> um, we've received so much information and so much knowledge uh, so far. So um, this will be the last one, but once again, you will have all of the notes, you have all the recordings and um, the contact information so we can stay in contact with them um, because they've given us so much um, the last few weeks. So um, Lisa and Nada, please take it away. Okay. Well, hi everybody. Next slide so we can see Nada. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. I can see myself on the corner. I'm sure everybody can there see. There we are, there you are in Croatia. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right, go ahead. Okay, so I, I think by now everybody knows who I am. I'm Nada Corey of the Joseph P. Corey Foundation, and I am a native Croat. I've been born in Croatia. I've raised, I've been raised on a farm with my maternal grandparents, and that's where uh, the foundation for everything that I'm doing today has. Uh, been created and been based upon. So I've just built upon that in the last 20 years. I've truly delved deeply into um, into anything and everything that is co connected to uh, good health and well-being uh, in the most natural way. So, so far we have learned about gardening and preparing a garden and where and what uh, to plant and when to plant and how to tend to. Um, we have touched um, base on uh, pretty much everything that uh, that is uh, in, re in regard, necessary in regard to planting a garden. And uh, there are no excuses because we can plant anything uh, even in a pot uh, on a little patio or balcony or uh, wherever we we have a little bit of space that uh, that is exposed to the sun and fresh air so now we have graduated to the point where we're going to delve into all the goodies that have been um, produced by our own hands or the hands of uh, somebody else that is growing uh, organically fruits and vegetables from which then we can get all of our uh, nutrition from and our health is based upon and maintained as well. So today's topics uh, are about eating for optimal health and well-being. And um, what is uh, the topics that we're going to address is what is food combining, benefits from good food choices, seasonal and regional eating, gut health and mindful eating. So all of this information I've kind of gathered um, and learned about through, as I said, through the past, um, primarily through the past 20 years of my journey uh, doing uh, this and uh, learning more upon what I already knew or I, I uh, remembered from my childhood as I was growing up in a very healthy, organic environment in Croatia. So uh, food combining, uh, what is food combining? Is uh, we have a different, uh, different kinds of um, foods that we are dealing with. So we have carbohydrates, we have fats, we have proteins, and uh, we have fruits and vegetables. Uh, so uh, what is the best way of combining those that our body is not taxed in the process of combining? Uh, our our uh, meats, our uh, meals, and our the, whatever we are going to eat. So uh, there is a proper way, and a healthier way, and easier way for our body to digest uh, than what maybe we are accustomed to. So usually, what we are, you can go to the next slide. Um, so. Uh, we, I'm sure that everybody knows a little bit about my plate or um, what are the standards of healthy eating and healthy eating tips. So uh, a food guide that helps you make your own well-balanced eating plan. You eat enough, but you don't overeat. 
So your food gives you the nutrients you need to stay healthy and boost your own immune system. Uh, and the rule of the thumb here is that fruits and vegetables should be half uh, of your plate at least. And then one quarter, uh, some whole grains, a quarter of protein, some kind of protein, um, healthy oils in moderation, and uh, what is, you know, drinking water, coffee, tea, um, what is the right water to drink and uh, which coffee to drink if you're drinking coffee and in, in moderation and which teas to drink as well. And when do you drink it? Do you drink while you eat? Or do you drink separately? Do you drink before or do you drink after? And of course, uh, staying, staying active because when we move, everything moves. Um, our blood circulates, we are oxygenating, our nutrition uh, is being transported to our cells and, um, and also our digestion is moving as well. There is a constant movement actually in our digestive system, which is called peristalsis. So everything moves in waves and that way the food is being pushed through the, uh, the entire digestive system but um, maybe your nutritionist will talk more about things like that. Okay, so um, uh, one of the fun ways, and uh, in particular with children, is eating like a rainbow, which is a healthy way of eating. And actually every color of food that we eat has a certain component um, for our health, and it tells us something. Like red foods are good uh, for our heart and our blood, blood health. They support our joint function. White foods, for example, support immunity and the circulatory system and can reduce the risk of, uh, of cancers, therefore, and so on. Blue and purple foods help with um, mineral absorption and can improve our memory and our brain function. Green foods are good for our bones as well as uh, helping our body detox and clean out toxins on a regular basis, strengthening therefore our immune system. Uh, yellow foods are good for our skin, for our heart, for our eyes. Uh, they improve our digestion and our immune system therefore because uh, our immune system lies actually in our digestive system. Orange, orange foods, they help prevent cancer, reduce the risk of heart disease. So every food that uh, we grow in our gardens actually have, um, have a health component uh, uh, in them that helps our body along the way. So we can move on to the next slide. So benefits from choosing whole foods. Okay, um, what are whole foods? Obviously, they are foods that are not processed. And um, what is the difference between, uh, you know, whole, whole foods uh, and processed foods? Processed foods are obviously processed in some form or shape. Uh, and unfortunately, here uh, in America and most of the world, we have a lot of that uh, present in our stores. Everything is pre-made and uh, um, in some form or shape processed. Uh, bleached, for example, our uh, grains are bleached, sugar is bleached, um, uh, so that it becomes, you know, it gets that uh, white color. But yet the nutrition really lies in in the in the husks around the grains for example so whole grains are much more beneficial for us than than the bleached ones and legumes obviously uh, as well the more natural they are the better they are for us and um, if we for example like uh, uh, preparing beans or lentils and and such uh, legumes then what I do is I soak them I soak them overnight because there is a uh, an enzyme that is present um, in the husks around around the, the grains 
and that is that is uh, much much harder for us to deal with. So they contain um, they the these starchy these are starchy proteins, right? And they both have protein and they have starch, and they contain phytates or enzymes inhibitors. So that um, the actual enzymes that are helping uh, the the process of breaking down the food, they are kind of inhibited. So by soaking, we are stripping some of that away and you can soak it with a strip of kombu, which is a sea vegetable, which, uh, which helps in that process. And then you rinse it the next day. And then uh, first of all, you're shortening the, the cooking time uh, as well as helping in the digestive process. So you will not have the gassy uh, reactions in the bloating when you eat beans and other legumes. At least that's how I do it. And I've uh, experimented and explored and it works for me. Um, then what, what else are whole, are whole foods? Fresh fruits and vegetables, obviously, so not processed. Uh, if you can eat your apple straight from the tree or your mango, you know, uh, instead of having it being in some kind of uh, yogurt already mushed down, or or in some um, in some other way of preparing it, uh, it is most likely then uh, covered or induced with uh, with some kind of sugar. And obviously, sugar is definitely the worst thing that we can introduce into our uh, daily routine and our our eating. So. Take your mango from the tree and eat it as is uh, fresh in, uh, in the morning. It is best to eat our uh, fruits in the first part, the first part of the day. So morning time is excellent for any kind of fruits to eat. Um, so we can move on to the next slide, I'm sure. Um, so use your brains for the best grains. Okay. So here are some examples of some good grains like brown rice, millet, quinoa, buckwheat, oats, barley, rye, and spelt. Uh, these are, a lot of them are also, uh, they are gluten-free, basically. They all are, from what I can see here, which is obviously, as we mentioned, I think in our previous, um, previous presentation, gluten is gluten intolerance is pretty much present today with everyone uh, and that is because of the gmo component in our grains and our food so these are some excellent uh, grains and uh, again i do the same thing if i use any of this i always soak it because of that enzyme inhibitor i do the same thing with my nuts by the way the nuts also have uh, this enzyme inhibitor in the husk around them. And if you soak it overnight, it eliminates that. And then you can actually dehydrate them or put them, you know, in, on low heat in your oven. You can drizzle some olive oil and some herbs on them and you have an amazing healthy snack with your nuts. But soak them. It's, uh, it's, you will notice that they are much easier digested. You will not feel heavy. Uh, or bloated after you eat them. We can go to the next slide, please. Okay, the brain in your gut. Okay, so uh, controls the digestion, swallowing, enzyme release, blood flow, elimination. What does that mean? Okay, uh, there is nothing that works just by itself uh, within our body. It is such a perfect combination of functions. It is the perfect machine, so to say, a very smart machine that makes us, that makes our body. And, uh, and it always works together. So sometimes you might notice that your digestion might be slowed down if something is going on in your mind. So if you're worried about something or someone, um, and, uh, you will feel that your digest digestion is being affected in some form or shape. A lot of times it could be uh, constipation or it could be diarrhea or, you know, we're all different and we change along 
our lifespan. So just be mindful that, you know, if your mind is working on something stressful and heavy, it might affect your digestion, okay? And our digestion starts actually in our mouth. So when we are eating, um, when we start chewing, we are releasing uh, enzymes that are already helping in the breakdown of the food. They also send the, um, they send the information to the gut and to the digestive system of releasing uh, the particular enzymes that are necessary for the breakdown of the food that we are eating. And different foods require different kinds of enzymes for sure. Uh, of course, uh, our, our brain and our gut obviously have an effect on our blood flow and the process of elimination. So uh, everything works much better if there is no strain on our gut and our digestive system. And, if, and, and the strain can come, as I said, from emotion, but also from our food combining. So we have, we can go on to the next one, which then in the end will affect our elimination process. Yes, too much gluten, dairy, and sugar. What happens when we have too much of that in our, in our body? Um, um, you, I'm sure that you have experienced it yourself and you haven't paid attention. Maybe you will come to the same conclusion as I did that, um, certain these these particular uh, uh, um, experiences will occur so mental and physical fatigue if you eat a heavy meal uh, or if you eat a lot of gluten and dairy and sugar in particular you'll have a sugar rush and then you'll have a crash we know that right um, and if if the food is not being properly combined and properly therefore digested it will create bloating, it will create gas, um, it will affect our, obviously, the sugar will spike, the blood pressure will go up, and of course, we'll have issues with weight, with cholesterol, and if the process of elimination is not functioning properly, what will happen? The toxins will find a way to come out, and a lot of times that is through acne as well as a... Um, perspiration and a smell that we then kind of uh, excrete and it will also affect our premature skin aging so a lot of stuff comes from uh, things that are not uh, working for our body for sure we can go to the next slide uh, and here I've come up um, across a beautiful kind of a chart which helps us. It's like a cheat sheet, cheat sheet, sheet, sheet on um, the categories uh, of different foods and what belongs like, you know, under which category. Um, I don't know, uh, Charlotte, if you can uh, extract that and maybe print it and so people can access it and have it as a cheat sheet. Maybe that would be, that would be great. Um, it is, it is, um, conceptually an easy way to opt, uh, optimally utilize the foods that we eat and it is a holistic approach I must say for sure so um, you would learn that for example you can combine anything under each category and then there is a neutral category in the middle right the it says neutral so from the neutral category you can combine things into all the other categories Basically, that's what it is. Um, and the key is to wait like three to four hours between switching from category to category. Uh, certain foods will digest very quickly, which are, for example, fruits, for, you know, in particular, melons. Um, melons are something that um, I found out and I've learned also along the way through all those different courses and uh, things that I have attended, melon should be eaten by itself because it will go through the system very quickly within 20 minutes uh, from eating. It will actually leave our body and all the 
nutrients will remain and be easily uh, absorbed into the system. Yet, if you combine melon with something else, with a heavy protein like um, Italians like to do, for example, prosciutto, right? Many people will have issues with that digestion because the fruit, if combined wrongly, will create fermentation in our gut, which will give us then uh, bloating and uh, some other negative experiences as well. So this is um, this is just one example, and there are there are many. So. Um, I can I can give you some examples um, if you wanted to, but maybe that's not necessary. We can you can you know ask me questions, and I can give you some examples of combining grains and starchy vegetables, uh, for example, with non-starchy vegetables, vegetables or sea vegetables, or protein fats with starchy vegetables and sea vegetables, and so on. I can give you some examples of what would work best or not if you would like me to. Okay, but we can continue now to the next slide. Oh, here um, um, we have included an amazing recipe. Uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with fermented foods and uh, the, the, understanding, the understanding that fermented, fermented and naturally occurring probiotic foods help in our digestion. I've heard many times from some amazing uh, teachers of mine that said, if you would eat two spoons of fermented food with your meal, you would have no problem with your digestion. Um, but here we gave you an, a recipe for something that is very easy to do. You can do it at home. And it is a drink and it is a probiotic drink. So you don't have to... Uh, spend a lot of money in buying uh, your probiotic, uh, you know, kombucha is very for me, you know, popular these days and so on. So, uh, uh, Rejuvelac is made from either um, uh, wheat or you can make it from quinoa as well. I like it from quinoa actually more because it's lighter and uh, the recipe will tell you how to prepare it. You're basically soaking it uh, and then uh, keeping, you know, once it starts a fermentation, uh, you drink it uh, throughout the day, but at least two hours away from your meal, uh, from anything that you would eat, so that the probiotic get um, into, into your gut uh, and uh, settle in there appropriately otherwise it will start uh, doing its thing already in the gut and not in the digestive system where it's needed so what are fermented foods okay um, well yogurt kefir kombucha sauerkraut pickles miso tempeh kimchi even sourdough bread dough bread because it's fermented you know the the, the starter for sourdough bread is fermented and some cheeses are also fermented, um, basically. So uh, I'll give you just a, a short version of how you can actually make your own sauerkraut in a very easy way and um, a very uh, quickly at home in a healthy way. So um, a holistic approach. So you can basically take a head of, of uh, sour of, of, of cabbage and chop it, slice it, you know, grate it, whatever you want to do, um, as if you are making your coleslaw. And then you take another um, half a head of, uh, of a cabbage and you put that in the food processor so that it almost becomes, that it becomes liquid. Now you, uh, you put your, um, your, your coleslaw, right, your chopped cabbage, in a, um, a crock pot, for example, you know, you're not going to cook it, but you're going to, you can put it in there. You pour the liquid over it and uh, into the liquid, you can introduce a little bit of cumin or some salt. Um, you can even grate some carrots in the, uh, in the uh, cabbage as well, or whatever you like. And you pour um, that liquid over over the sliced uh, 
cabbage and you can put a cloth over it and put some kind of weight to press it down. The key is that the air goes out of it, okay? And you keep it on your um, counter uh, for a day or two and you will see that it will start to ferment. Once it started to ferment, then you can eventually refrigerate it, but you have created an, a very simple and natural way of your own sauerkraut, okay? Without chemicals, without anything. It is a natural process that I've just described. Okay. Uh, you can do your own yogurts and kefirs too, but um, that's besides the point. That may be a little bit more complicated. I've given you some very simple examples here. The rejuvelac to drink or making your own sauerkraut, which you can, you can even spice it up. You can add some um, hot peppers in there if you like spice or a little bit of jalapeno or whatever but the base is the cabbage okay now we can go on all right so um this is another way of drinking your way to good health and this is a practice that i do on a daily basis i uh, juice my greens in the morning and that's um, where i get uh, amazing energy from i get my um digestive juice is just flowing. So uh, you can obviously drink uh, your, one of your meals it could be a liquid meal. And this is what I'm talking about here. So what I do is I simply um, properly wash and clean some of my greens. So I usually, uh, it usually entails some celery, as you can see here, a green apple, uh, a chunk of ginger and turmeric and kale and spinach and parsley. This is it. Um, and I just put it through my juicer. Or if you don't have a juicer, you can uh, put it in your food processor and then, then strain it. So you have the juice, which you can then drink. Optimally, it is best to drink it right after you have processed it and made it into juice, okay? That's where you will have the optimal nutrients available to your body. Um, and then if you're straining it, then the remnants, what I do with them, I collect them when I have like a cup full or so, then I use them for my um, corn or, uh, you know, other spelt or... Uh, um, flaxseed muffins, so savory muffins. Uh, and I don't throw anything away, basically. So this is another good way. And when you're drinking, in order to saturate and satisfy your need for chewing and eating and also to starting the digestive juices flowing, chew your juice. So you make the motion of chewing your juice, okay? And it does make a difference. All right, we can go to the next slide. This is a very, very important component to eating, mindful eating. And what does that mean? So you are eating not in front of the TV or, you know, in an environment which is constantly taking your attention away from the action that is in front of you, which is eating. Uh, so try to make it as peaceful and quiet as possible. Focus on what you're doing. And what I love to do, I love to energize my food or pray over my food. I, I give my gratitude to the food before I eat it. Literally. I say, you know, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the loving hands that grew this. Thank you for the loving hands that prepared it. And thank you for the nourishment and the nutrients that are coming into my body to give me life source energy. And believe it or not, try it out and you will see it will make a difference. Okay? Uh, it is an art to be present in the moment, just like with everything else. Be present in the action of eating in a gratitude state of mind. Chew your food intentionally. 
chew it multiple times, like 20 times, chew it. And it will help in absorbing of the nutrients. It will help in the digesting of it as well, which also will help you in uh, losing weight because the connection between uh, our gut and our mind is going to be much more collaborative and in tuned with each other. If we just simply gulp things down, there is no time for the brain to calculate that I am full. It, it is delayed, a reaction. It, the, the reaction is delayed. And therefore, we overstuff ourselves and then we really don't feel good. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Uh, ways to enjoy more fruits and vegetables. Okay, these are some examples. So, you know, um, there are gluten-free pizzas. Uh, there are, I don't know if you ever tried, but there is a, um, a cauliflower uh, pizza base. And then you can put toppings on there, with which you, whichever you like, and try to make them uh, your, your vegetables from the garden, okay? Some of them you can, you know, roast together and some of them you can then afterwards add on fresh, like you can add on some arugula on top of your, your tomatoes or peppers or whatever you have put on your pizza. And it will give it, and then drizzle some good olive oil on there and it will give it an amazing taste. Um, when you do your smoothies, uh, if you like to start with your, uh, with your fruit smoothies uh, in, in the morning, as we said, it is optimal to eat your fruits in the morning. So add more berries in, into your smoothies, in particular blueberries, um, blackberries. Raspberries and strawberries are good as well, but just be mindful that really uh, they have to be organic because those two, those lighter colors, have a tendency of absorbing uh, the pesticides much, much more than the darker skinned ones. So really be mindful. If you're eating and love strawberries and raspberries, they have to be organic. Uh, don't, get, don't get them if they're not because you are not eating the strawberry, you're eating the pesticide with the strawberry. Wedgie wraps with roasted vegetables are delicious, delicious. You can just um, cut up some veggies on a baking sheet, put it in the oven, you know, put, drizzle some oil, olive oil on there, put some of your favorite um, spices on there. You know, I get my oregano or my basil, uh, uh, rosemary, whatever I have in the garden, and uh, if I have it dehydrated or if I have dried, yeah, I just sprinkle it on there. If I have it fresh, I just layer it over there, and it will infuse your your vegetables that you're roasting, and then you can um, put them in a in a container, a glass container or something. Put them in the in your refrigerator, and you have it ready for uh, whatever you want to use them for. Reggie wraps are delicious and uh, so good for you. Um, crunchy vegetables, nib nibbling on crunchy vegetables instead of chips. And you can create some amazing dips, dipping sauces for that. If you go to the Joseph Bicori Foundation and look at our videos, we have some amazing recipes where you can uh, learn how to make healthy dips and dip your, your cut up carrots and, and, and uh, cucumbers and fennels and uh, uh, any of the vegetables that you zucchini, you know, and just dip them in that sauce and you will be, you will be satisfied, but you will also be healthier. Um, add colors to your salad. Rainbow, here is the rainbow thing. So what are the colors? Obviously, it's red pepper, it's, it's uh, carrot, it's artichoke hearts, radishes, pine nuts, fennel. All of that adds color and it adds nutrients to your beautiful salads. Plus, they become much more satisfactory and uh, you will not feel hungry if you combine these good things together. 
<laughs> get saucy with your fruit and crunch with your nuts. Uh, as I mentioned before, nuts are a great source of protein, but please do soak them and then you can uh, just dry them up in the oven and actually spice them up with a little bit of uh, whatever you like uh, from, as I said, from your, from your garden's resources and a little bit of good salt. Uh, and there you go, you have amazing healthy snacks for yourself or you can just sprinkle some on your salad as well. Uh, you, can, you can create things from your fruit. If you have a lot of mangoes right now, uh, you can freeze them and then you can, you know, uh, I just saw a beautiful recipe where you can uh, take mango and um, add a few strawberries frozen to that, add a, a teaspoon of lime juice and mix it all together, blend it all together. You can actually, if you wanted to, you can add some nut milk maybe um, to that, but you don't have to. And then you top it off with some uh, coconut uh, raspals on, on top of that. So not sweetened, of course. And you have an amazing snack. So, you know, be creative, don't be afraid. Go for it and, and you will benefit from it greatly. And it is fun. Involve your children in the process of doing all of that. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, where to buy quality food? Okay, we have, I think, mentioned that before as well. So there are um, places where you can buy organic groceries. Pretty much every store has some organic uh, component to, to them. Uh, I would go and I love to go to uh, local farms or um, sustainable, uh, you know, uh, farmers that, that uh, uh, use uh, sustainable way of living and practices on their farms. Uh, in, uh, for example, here in my area, I use Ferris Farm, so they have it online. I can choose what they get for this week what is available and I go and just pick it up or you can go to a lot of farms sometimes you can go there and uh, pick yourself pick your tomatoes or, or peppers or some strawberries or whatever is in season and uh, buy there support your local growers and uh, eat healthier and eat you know there is duration of uh, something that comes directly from the garden or from a local farmer is much longer than something that you buy in the store um, because that has already already traveled thousands of miles uh, and has been treated or picked uh, before it was ripe uh, so that it wouldn't go bad during the transport so but of course, if you can, the best way, plant your own garden and grow whatever you can in your garden. And uh, I think you can find your local, uh, uh, local growers and farmers and all these places online. It's not a difficult thing to do. Okay, we can go to the next slide. <laughs> and here is a lovely quote by Hippocrates, a natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. I would say they are also the preventers of disease. So this is this is the official part and now we can go into answering some questions or if you want to hear more about more examples of um, combining uh, different uh, different fruits and vegetables uh, that work well together in accordance to um, to this holistic approach of food combining uh, that we have presented to you. All right, the mic is yours. I'm here to answer your questions gladly. And also before we go, I also wanted to let you know that I remembered uh, somebody in the group asked about aphids, which is a quite a nasty uh, pest that we here in Florida are exposed to. And what are aphids? They are um, common pests to gardeners, commercial growers, and greenhouses due to their wide species diversity and rapid reproductive cycle. There are, oh my goodness, some 1,351 species of aphids currently recorded in the US and Canada, 
of which 80 species are pests of food crops and ornamental plants. Most get their names from the plants they attack. The green peach um, aphid, the cabbage aphid, or the rose aphid. Um, so uh, how do you identify them? I would identify them. Aphids are slow moving and come in shades of green, red, brown, black, and yellow. Obviously, they melt into the environment. Their oblong bodies have two small tubes called cornicles projecting from the rear that are unique to them. These allow aphids to get rid of excess sugar in the form of honeydew. They have needle like mouth parts which they use to suck juices out of the plants. Uh, they don't chew, um, and there are there are ways of dealing with them in a <coughs> way. So um, you can use the yellow stick traps. You can use the garlic barrier. It's a spray. You can use a green a lace wing, um, and the ladybugs also. Uh, we have talked about ladybugs before. And um, uh, insecticide soap, neem oil. Uh, then there is another product called Bot Botany Guard 22 WP. Um, so these are just some of them. And, and you can find that in the attachment that uh, is attached to the presentation. Uh, and if you want to know more and if you want to see some, you know, what they look like, for example, right? This is one of them. And this is what the spray, the garlic barrier looks like. Oh, I don't think that was in the PDF, and I apologize for that. I'm not, I could perhaps, uh, hold on. It sounds like you have something, okay. Um, I mentioned in the name, so by the name, but these are just, you know, visual. Visual is always nice. It's, I like visual because not, I have a question. If you had those on your, someone Joanna says she has them on her tomatoes. Let's say you get rid of them, or something um, comes from the supermarket and you don't know what it is. There's a, a bug on them. By washing them thoroughly, I mean, is it a poisonous? Is it a problem? You know, if you have that on your food or. Well, I I, I would prefer not to ingest them. Uh, if you can vis physically remove them from, from your food, I would. Um, what I do with all of my veggies and fruits, I um, uh, ozonate them. I put them in water with an ozonator attached to it, and I ozonate it. And anything that uh, is visible or invisible to my eyes basically um, is destroyed in that form. So uh, there are, um, are like uh, veggies soaps or sprays that you can use. So um, I would definitely uh, clean the vegetables in such a form, in a healthy form that um, removes things like that. Yeah. I, I don't think they will kill you, but why introduce something that <laughs> you don't want in your body, right? Not extra. There's plenty of that already there. Not extra protein. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Don't go crazy about it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Lisa, the um, the one that you sent me does have the pictures. It does have the pictures. It has pictures, but I didn't think it had that green. Okay. I, yeah. All right. Thank. Well, that's good. We kind of did it this morning. So excellent. Yeah, it's <laughs> thank three you, pages Charlotte. Down. No problem. Right. It has these. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. Awesome. And uh, also, um, somebody wanted to know about basic gardening tools. So we created a list. I think that is an attachment as well, right? Well, we're going to, that is going to be our next presentation. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyone have any questions? Food combining, any questions for Nada while we still have her on? Okay. We thank you for the opportunity. It was wonderful. I know Nada had a, a wonderful time also speaking with everyone. And we hope that um, maybe there's some challenges that people will be meeting, but uh, just in general, um, just have a healthy life. Yes. All yeah. right. I, um, David, our next presentation.